Joining us for more on how the White House is looking at these numbers today, Jared Bercy, member of the White House Council of Economic Advisors. Jared, good to see you. This was a big surprise to economists uh, to see these numbers at the same time that we've seen so much disruption from the Omicron surge. So was the White House equally surprised? Well, one of the things we try to be very careful to do here, Kara, is never build too much into one month's data. We always like to look at the underlying trend. Yes, this was an upside surprise and very much a welcome one. Uh, but if you look at job gains, as the president said, over the first year of his presidency, record number, 6.6 .6 million people getting back to work. Uh, narrow that down to the past three months. 540,000 jobs per month on average. That is a very solid growth rate of jobs. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan, shots in arms, checks in pockets. You know, remember, when we got here, less than 1% of adults were vaccinated. Now over 75% fully vaccinated. Americans are back at work at a record-setting pace. All right, checks and pockets. Let's talk about the significant wage growth here for a second, Jared. Mm. But, you know, a lot of people, you know, rising prices are eating up any type of wage gains. And that's what Republicans are pointing to this morning, of course. Senator Tim Scott tweeting that the American people shouldn't be stuck with this runaway inflation. Uh, our ABC News Ipsos poll in December showed the president's approval ratings pretty much underwater when it came to both how he's handling inflation and the economic recovery. So what's your response to this idea that even if the economy, Jared, is doing well, it's not exactly how people are feeling right now. I think you have to start by looking at the progress in wage gains as seen in today's report. Uh, wages up 5.7% for the private sector workers. If you narrow that down and look at middle and low wage workers, just under 7%, 6.9%, pretty close to the rate of inflation. What that tells you, Kara, is that this job market is particularly welcoming, particularly boosting the bargaining power of our lowest paid workers. But you are absolutely right to bring inflation into this picture. The president has dispatched his team to work relentlessly to do everything we can on our side to help bring down those inflationary pressures. We're doing that at the ports. We're doing that with the trucks. More medium term, we're doing that with computer chips, trying to really boost domestic production. I'm sure you saw the president go out to Ohio, a $20 billion Intel plant uh, opening up there. Uh, and also, of course, the infrastructure plan, uh, implementing that efficiently, effectively, quickly. That also will help to boost the economy's uh, productive capacity. But we will not cease on these efforts until those inflation uh, prints begin to ease. When they do, uh, the job market is going to remain strong, we believe, and that means rising wages, slower inflation growth, more broad-based real wage gains. All right, so let me follow up on that. Do you think the strong job report, jobs report gives the Fed the green light to speed up those interest rate hikes to tamp down on inflation, and would you support that? Well, we don't get into the Fed's knitting. Unlike the prior administration, we believe in the, in, in the central importance of, uh, of independence for, for the Federal Reserve. You know, uh, I'm partially an economic historian. I can tell you that uh, the, the landscape of history is littered with economies that were brought to their knees by a dependent Federal Reserve that, that marches to the, uh, to the authoritarian, uh, authoritarian leaders. No, this is an independent Fed. That said, the president himself, I think it was last week, said that he supports the Fed's pivot and that their pursuit of full employment and stable prices is absolutely appropriate for this moment. But what you heard Chair Powell himself say is that this is a, quote, very, very strong labor market. What that means is that the fastest GDP growth in almost 40 years is making its way to working families, particularly those in the bottom half, through that connection between strong economic growth and an historically tight labor market. Well, the unemployment rate increased slightly, but is holding pretty steady, 4% up from 3.9% in December. We've talked a lot about the trouble employers have had in finding workers to fill all these open positions. Is that evolving? And what yeah. stands out to you? Really important question. You know, we tend to talk about our supply constraints uh, from the perspective of the ports and the ships and the shelves. In fact, uh, we think there's been real progress there. Containers down, container dwell time down uh, 60%, getting goods to the shelf 
but labor supply, there's constraints there as well. There's good news in this report uh, under the hood. If you look over the past year, which is the right way to do it based on some technical changes in the report, the labor force participation rate is up eight tenths of a percent. That's actually an historically pretty strong pace for labor support, labor supply to be growing. The very strong labor market that we've been talking about, fast decline of unemployment on record, 6.6 .6 million jobs, the president said, an historical record. When you get a job market that that's tight, that's that tight, it pulls people in from the sidelines. We'd like to see a lot more of that, and that means continuing to press on vaccinations and pressing our child care agenda so people can get into the job market. Uh, but we're seeing some progress there. We'd like to see some more. All right, Jared Bernstein, advisor to the White House Council of Economics. Appreciate you so much. Thank you, Kara. My pleasure. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.